recording it now, and then uh, putting out all the information that we learned today. So we put it in a blog post. There are different ideas that are shared. We want people to learn from each other and be able to uh, take ideas from one another. Uh, and so with that, I'll kind of kick it over to, to Jen to, to get us started. Hello, everybody. Happy Hump Day! <laughs> Happy there! We're so cool. glad to see you all. Oh, I've been excited. Um, thank you all for carving out some time to be here. Uh, Harris said we we've created this just to 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 pull folks together, to learn from and and with one another. I'm excited to learn from you, and I wanna I wanna start here just uh, quickly at the beginning, just asking each of you to share your name, where you live, where you work, what you do, and, and to briefly do that. We're, we should be able to do that hopefully in 30, 40 seconds, just so we know who's on. And, uh, and so Harris um, already kind of started us off. John Sanders, okay, A. Um, Ethan, I'm gonna just go around the Brady Bunch here so we can make sure we get everybody. Ethan Smith, please go right ahead. Definitely. So my name is Ethan Smith. I'm a, I grew up in New Hampshire, but I'm currently a rising junior, I guess now junior. Classes started the other day at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. Uh, and I'm a management major with a minor in psychology. Awesome. Ethan, so good to see you again. Glad you're here. Megan Broker. Woo -woo. Hello, Megan. Hello. I'm Megan Broker. I live in Colorado Springs and I work for a consulting firm, um, Alex Partners. And I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Christy Dooley now I see is right there. Hi, yes. Christy Dooley. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Christy Dooley. I'm an executive uh, coach and organization development consultant. I'm in Reston, Virginia, just down the road from OKA. <laughs> so happy to see you all. Dennis DiMaggio. Hello, Dennis. Good morning. My name is Dennis DiMaggio. I, I work for Breakthrough Beverage, uh, which is a uh, beverage alcohol distributor. I work in the learning and development department here in Baltimore. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Dennis. Jan, good morning. Good morning. I'm Jan Ferguson. I'm a life and leadership coach, uh, executive coach, and I just left um, the beautiful state of Florida and moved back up north. Um, and next door to you, Ethan, in Maine, the southern coast of Maine and um, I am coaching right now on certainty to create certainty there is certainty and so I'm anxious to hear what everybody has to say so glad you're here Jan thank you Hunter so good to have you back hi there Hunter hmm. she might not be connected to audio yet so Hunter can you can you hear us Hunter Okay, can't, okay, so we can't hear you. Okay, we'll come back, Hunter. Hermika, please, go right ahead. Good morning, Hermika Ray from, calling from Alexandria, Virginia. I work at Freddie Mac, and I'm doing business transformation, which includes a cadre of things. There's OD, there's coaching, there's leadership development, there's also business and process change, and I'm happy to be here. Good morning, everyone. Thank you. Hi, hi Jennifer, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm <clears throat> Jennifer Muffler. I work for Sentara Healthcare. We have about 12 hospitals in Virginia, North Carolina and getting ready to get a little bit bigger. And I work within our organizational development learning team as a, a senior team member development consultant. So, and I'm in Virginia Beach, actually. Virginia Beach, Virginia. So. Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Glad to see you. Marcus. Hello, Marcus. Good morning. Uh, Marcus Wright. Uh, I work for myself, Break Say Right LLC. Um, I'm currently doing a few things, but the main thing that I try to coach is activating your self awareness for personal and professional growth. Um, you know, I've actually started uh, uh, the phrase the right mentality and have it uh, in the process of being uh, trademarked. So I'm all about the right mentality, having the right focus to move forward in life. Love it. So good to see you again, Marcus. Thanks for being here. And I, I see a phone number, but not a face. It's a 41. Oh, you don't see my face? Ugh. You don't see my face? Don't see. Oh, wait. Oh, that's attached to you, Hunter? It's me. I had to call back in. I got dropped off. So. Okay. Hunter Haynes, so glad to have you here as a phone and a person to get, I mean, yeah. yes. 
tell us a little bit about you, Hunter. So I am Hunter Haynes. I work for the University of Maryland Medical System. Um, we have about um, 14 or so hospitals in Maryland. And in um, a senior organizational development and inclusion consultant, um, I develop and deliver leadership development um, training and um, I do leadership coaching. Um, I uh, do uh, all kinds of consulting throughout the organization. So I, I do a lot of things. I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, I live in Maryland as well, near Annapolis. Great, great. So, so glad to have you, Hunter. Uh, Harris, did I get everybody? I only- Did we get Margie? Um, uh, I don't think so. I don't- Margie Bush? Margie. Hi, Harris. Oh. Hi, Jen. Hi. Hi, Margie. Sorry. Can you, you hear were, me? You were in the grass. You were in the grass. <laughs> I know. I had to, I had to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Margie. Please go right ahead. Sure. Uh, so I'm Margie Bush, and I live in West Virginia. So I also do leadership development uh, programs and coaching, and also uh, now into health and wellness. Uh, coaching as well. Just finished a program with Duke University. So, um, and I'm here just to learn more. Newly certified in EQ with Jen uh, back in right at the beginning of the uh, quarantine, I think, uh, late March. So excited to be here and learn from everybody. Thanks so much, Marky. You're welcome. All right. Now I think officially we, all right. Thank you all for, um, for, for shouting out here at the beginning. I think it's important that we know who, who's on and so we start to make some of those connections. Before we get into our, our content, um, I wanted to just ask y'all to indulge me for, for a few moments. I wanna, I wanna take the time to do a quick exercise. Um, here, here's why. One of the things I personally have found helpful um, when, when facing stress, and let's just be realistic, the, the world is facing some, some stress right now. Each of us, our, our staff, those folks who are our clients can be facing um, stress that they've never faced before. And, and so what we're here to talk about are ways in which we can help others face the space of uncertainty and change and, and stress. And, and to do that for me personally, I have found the act of practicing gratitude to be really helpful. Um, and so I want to have each of us do that here for, for a moment. I want you to think about right now, today, for what or for whom are you grateful? For what or, or for whom are you grateful? And, and so you can jot that down, you can just hold it up here in your noggin Think about it, be intentional about it. And, and the more specificity you can bring, I think all the better. Let me give you a few moments to, to do that. Things got together. And so practicing gratitude, if you're, if you're still thinking, keep on keeping on, please, please um, has, um, has been very helpful for me personally and the research supports that it touches this, this space. Um, I am interested in if anyone's comfortable sharing, putting it out uh, to, to the room here, some of what you have, um, you have had surface. I think that this is a space too where we can learn from and with one another. Sometimes I forget for what or for whom I should be grateful. Maybe it's not as easy for me to, to access that. So help remind me of, of, um, of what I should have on my radar. I want uh, again to remind you of that specificity. Like I could say I'm grateful for, for my job. I am. But the more I can narrow that focus, I think the, the easier it is for me to see those things when they start to surface and to remind me of, um, of, of the good and, and to counter that stress. 
So I could say I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for my job. I also could say that I'm grateful for um, the fact that I work with people who actually want to see me. Um, yesterday, I did not want to drive. A lot of you know that I live an hour and 10 minutes from the office and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go to the office. But but I was thinking about how much those people, Heil and Gina and, Her um, and Hassan, wanted to see me. I, and so it just made me drive a little bit faster, made that drive a, a lot easier. I'm grateful for Harris, and not just for Harris um, as my colleague, but, but to be very specific about it is Harris brings a new energy to OKA. The way in which he reaches out and connects with customers, clients, potential prospects is like nothing we've ever had at OKA. Um, the way he answers the phone when I call, I can hear in his voice that he's happy to hear from me and it can just change my day. And, and so Harris, I have not told those things to, and I should be telling him more of those things. And so Harris, I'm grateful for you. Um, Harris, do you want to, you said you would start us off too, and not everybody doesn't have to share, but just something quick. I took a long time. Um, you can't take that long. Sorry. Sorry, Charlie's. <laughs> ah, but I'm running this show and I guess I ran my mouth. Sorry. Harris, go right ahead. Yeah. Wow. Well, well thank you, Jen. I appreciate that. And, uh, so I'm getting married in 11 days officially, and I am incredibly grateful that it is coming and it is soon. Uh, wedding planning is no fun and it is 11 days away and I am checking off the date and, and ready for it. So I'm grateful that we are 11 days away and yes. that is what I'm grateful for. <laughs> Anybody else want to share uh, for what or for whom you're grateful to, to maybe help remind us of things we could possibly have on our radar. If, if so, raise your hand. And if not, that's okay. Marcus, please. So first, congratulations, Harris. That's awesome. And no, it's not fun planning. That's why I just stay out the way. Stayed out the way 21 years ago. But um, for me, I, I am grateful for uh, my grandparents who are no longer here, but the, and my uh, father who's no longer here, who they all instilled the values of looking at a person and understanding their character and judging them by character and nothing else. So in the tough time that we face today, those values that they instilled in me allows me to just let's say that there's some positivity in all of us. And the reason that I took emotional intelligence was to understand how we all face different things and how we deal with them. So the values that they put in me really helps me with the emotional intelligence because it helps me just look at people and understand <clears throat> we all have stressful situations and we just need to learn how to deal with them. Thank you so much, Marcus. Thank you so much. Anybody else want to share? Jan, please go right ahead. It's so amazing. Synchronicity is, you know, what we all know about. And so I did this this morning in my morning meditation. And what I did is I made a list of people I take for granted in this moment in time. And I listed under each one of them, and they're the people I love. The people I take for granted are the people I love, right? So I listed underneath all of their names, all the things that I just love about them. And I, and I started with my husband because we have been isolated together for five, six months maybe now, almost six months. And it's been exceptional. I mean, if you wanna test a relationship, you know, we're a new relationship, so you know if you want to test it. And so I was writing down all the lovely things about him, where he's understanding and he is kind and he's you know responsible. My daughter's pregnant and we are in isolation because she's concerned about COVID. And we've done really really well. And I have to give it to him. It's a, it's two people make a relationship. So. I love that. I love it, Jan. I love the, that list of those we can take for granted and, and then reminding of ourselves of what they bring to our world. That made me have some goose bumpers, Jan Ferguson. I love it. Yes. Um, anybody else want to share? Uh, Dennis. Dennis and then Jennifer. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, my, my job Used to require me to travel a lot. I had reached the uh, I had reached uh, the the highest level of uh, Marriott and Southwest that you can reach, which is the world's worst accomplishment. 
Uh, and so to not travel now is, uh, it is great. I have three teenage daughters at, in the house, which is why my hair looks like this. Uh, but, uh, I didn't realize how much of their day-to-day -day life that I, that I just didn't see. And so to be home since March, um, has been fantastic. They, 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 they're, they're, I'm lucky they're, they're good kids. And, um, but just, uh, this has been, this has been time that you, that I would never have gotten. And so it's a, it's a great thing to be. It's a great thing. I love that, Dennis. Thank you so much. And, and one more, Jennifer, please go right ahead. Yeah, and Dennis, I'll actually tag off on that because my husband used to travel a lot. He had met all those levels as well. And I am grateful that he's <clears throat> now home more. And, you know, what I was going to say is that I'm grateful for my village, my husband being home more. We have two very young kids. We're getting ready to embark on virtual learning yet again. Um, so I'm grateful for the village of my husband, my family, friends within our neighborhood, neighbors that are all coming together to make that work. I so. love that, Jennifer. Thank you so much. It does take a village. And, and what you said there at the end, Jennifer, is, um, is a perfect segue into where, what, where we're going next. So you are about to embark on um, this uh, virtual learning that many parents are facing. And so in this time of, of change and uncertainty and stress, to add to all of that, that already was a thing, so many of us now are getting ready or maybe have already even stepped in to, um, to adding that, that online school. And, and so we're, uh, we're here to talk about ways in which we can, um, we can help our clients, we can help our employees within our organizations um, face what we're all facing and, and to generate some ideas on how y'all might be touching that space. Um, and, and so let's begin to share. To start us off with that, we, um, we have asked, and, um, and I wanna shout out this too, uh, I am grateful for this woman. I am so glad you were born, Hermika Ray. Um, she's going to start us off. Hermika gives me the gift of, of, reminding, of, of reminders, of reminding me of the importance of being others focused. She's so generous with her time, um, with the resources she sh shares, for reaching out and just saying um, hello and thinking of you, those sorts of things. I'm grateful for you, Hermika. And, and so let's go ahead and start it off. Freddie Mac. Can you share with us a few things that Freddie's doing to help this space? Absolutely. Thank you so much. I didn't get a chance to share um, what I was grateful for, um, and that sort of connects to this. Jeez. I had a lot of time to think during this time, and I actually took a couple days of rest, which is actually very important, and it gives you an opportunity to recenter. But I'm really thankful for relationships, and relationships with not just my family, but relationships with people that I work with, relationships with everybody on this call right now. And um, I don't know if you could see, I, I doodle a lot. Um, but for the most part, I, I pretty much had everybody as a community of people giving each other flowers and sharing their gift. And in the center of that is love because love is the greatest gift. And how do you do that? You do that through sharing. So, um, and connection. And just being there. Um, so that's the beauty of it. And Freddie Mac specifically, um, we actually have put a keen focus on well being. Uh, there's a lot happening and there's a lot of change with the global health crisis, with um, the social injustice. There's people who have been very anxious, they've expressed that they can't work, um, they have a lot of challenges with the kids and family. And then, of course, um, there was something that was brought to my attention a couple of months ago of how difficult it is for singles um, to actually be in isolation alone. And so we started to think about holistically how could we offer different services beyond where we offer today. So we amped up our counseling services um, 24 hours. Uh, we have a contract with DHS. There's been a lot of uh, focus on creating thematic articles like Meditation Mondays, Wellness Wednesdays, 
Um, I have a, a theme for every day of the week to, <laughs> for everyone that I work with. There's tons of articles and resources and panel discussions and some of the things that we've talked a lot about. I did a big focus on burnout because a lot of people don't realize that they're going through burnout. And what does that look like? And how do we get support? And how do we seek help? And when do we draw the boundaries and say, okay, that's enough? Because what happens is without the commute, um, there is the sense that you're constantly available. You're available from the time you wake up until 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And uh, what's happening is it's really drawing away from people being at their best. And so we've been working in a multi-pronged approach, leaders, and also employees, but then holistically the organization. We're um, promoting people to take vacation. We're having um, fun Fridays where people leave at two o'clock uh, for those who are able to do that. Um, we also have a lot of panel discussions within our, our ERG networks. Something as simple as we have one hour that we block off every day on the calendar to do something like meditation, exercise, rest, you're not supposed to work. Everyone's taking walks during the day and practicing gratitude and sharing that. And so um, I, I find that there's so many resources out there. It's how do you infuse it and make it part of a natural way of being in your culture? And how do you draw the boundaries between performance and actually self-care and thinking about people? Because yes, we still have to work. But our people is our most valuable asset. I remember I said that in uh, EQ, Jen. <laughs> people, the people are China. And how do we take care of that? And how do we cultivate that where people are actually feeling included, heard, and at least respected where they can draw the boundaries in their space? And we have some people who choose to get on and log on at 9 o'clock at night because that's the best time for them uh, versus 8 o'clock in the morning. You just have to work the schedules out. But there's been this uh, definite concern about school and virtual classes for people with young children, especially several young children, and how would you manage? And so bringing that to the forefront, we're talking a lot about resiliency and how do you manage stress and corona and eating healthy. We actually have uh, our chefs come in and do um, Working through the video conference, we actually make a meal together. We still use our um, fitness center to do classes online as people get online, but also how are we creating uh, the environment where people feel that they can care for their family and wow. still work. And so that has been very important. Uh, can I jump in because, sure. oh my gosh, I'm overflowing with all the good stuff that you just put out there. And, and so I have, I have questions and I'm wondering if everybody might have some questions too. So can, can I just ask it sure. pause about, I, I mean, I want to attend those classes. Um, I mean, come on, those are fantastic. Yes. Um, the uh, folks, thoughts or questions about some of what Hermika has already shared with us because there there's a lot I see a lot of people jotting stuff down remember this is being recorded and our friend Ethan Smith is taking some notes and we're going to be pushing this out as well so if you you didn't get everything it's coming your way um, anybody have thoughts or questions curiosities because we're hoping you can learn from Hermika and even start to spread some of these ideas in, in your organization or with your clients. I want to, I want to just create this pause here. Um, anybody have anything right now that you might, Christy Dooley, please go right ahead, Christy. Yeah, Hermika, I love hearing all the ideas of the things you guys are doing at Freddie Mac. It's really awesome. I'm getting a lot of, um, requests and interest in talking with groups about resilience and, um, and I've, you know, I've worked in that area a lot before with just, you know, strategies for well-being. But I'm so interested in the burnout aspect of, of this that you mentioned and just really um, helping people get more clear about noticing the signs of burnout. And I'm wondering kind of how you've worked that into some of the programming that you've talked about, because that's a really, I, th I think that's really happening a lot. It yeah, is. It myself. <laughs> It is. I was, I was, I was susceptible. Um, I actually started a, before we actually went to quarantine, I'd started some work in burnout. There's um, two books. Uh, one was the high cost of success, Dr. Frudenberg, and also um, 
the burnout, uh, there's a test in there, the burnout type, the high cost of success and burnout for women specifically, the, the need to achieve. Uh, of course. And so there was two different lenses from it. And I used that as the basis. However, with BHS, which is our counseling service, they have actually had a lot of um, feedback on feeling burned out. And so we actually had a session maybe two weeks ago on burnout. And what does that feel like? And what are some of the signs? And prior to that, everybody took a burnout test. And so I think, I don't know if I sent you guys the burnout test, but I actually have a Test that you could actually put out there and say, hey, here's the pulse check. A lot of times uh, when you start to feel disconnected, when you're ex especially tired, um, when it's really distracting, there's very small things that we don't pay attention to. And it's part of the signs. And if you're not really careful, um, you start to go into a slump. And that starts to affect everything emotionally from an EQ perspective, but also how you show up and how people experience you and your productivity. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's part of one of the reasons how we did the burnout. We did workshops. We had panel discussions. Hermika, um, let me ask. So thank you for, for that. Mm -hmm. And Christy Dooley, I want to make sure that you, that was what you were looking for Absolutely. before I, I pull you in. That um, that burnout self test that I know that was something you shared with Harris and I. Is that something those questions that we could share with the group, or is that proprietary and and contractual? We can't share that with this group. So I would say, from the perspective of sharing with this group for the sense of awareness, that is fine. You okay. should you I I would not guard I would guard against duplicating yes. or fabricating the questions for your own. You just create your own questions for Perfect. your own purposes if that makes sense yeah uh, that makes total sense and thank you because it's a i actually really liked the questions and i think it sure. might be helpful for everybody um so thank you for that christy dooley is that uh, everybody i christy dooley and i go way back and i call her christy dooley always um because i just <laughs> like the flow christy dooley christy. yes <laughs> so, <laughs> christy is that um yeah that that's true? that's really helpful i mean it's something that i really want to think about more as i'm putting things together, even in terms of group coaching and yeah. stuff like that. So thank you, Hermika. You're welcome. It made a great mastermind. I will say that I will also send Jen and Harris the resource for the two burnout books. I know that they were, they're pretty dated and out of, um, they may be out of publication, but maybe you can find it on Amazon um, because this group was the first group that really did a, a huge study on burnout and high achievement. Hmm, good. Marcus, I know that you, you had a question for Hermika, um, or at least you did. Do you still have that question, Marcus? No, she, <clears throat> she answered it. It was a great question, Chrissy, that I wanted to ask about Perfect. exactly what you asked. I, I am curious, though, how do people receive the cooking classes online? <laughs> oh, well, well, the interesting thing is they're doing much. There's an opportunity to share and there's an opportunity to connect differently when you're so used to being around people, everybody's cooking together and you see it on the screen and then you come back with pictures and say, oh my gosh, I screwed that cake up. Um, so I think that it gives people the sense of inclusion in a different way. Okay. And so inclusion has been a big deal because there's so many ways to feel included that we don't naturally tap into. And it could be something right. as simple as cooking. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else have any other? Ethan Smith, yes. Please go right ahead, Ethan. Definitely. Hermika, one thing you said that really stood out to me was the balance between performance and well-being. Uh, and you don't necessarily get both at the same time. You really have to be intentional about going out of your way to seek out that well-being. So how have you found that time to go and incorporate all these classes and programs into your schedule without sacrificing too much of that performance aspect? Great question. That's a great question. So there's two things. Um, I'm very intentional about saying no or not now. I'll say not now or perhaps. <laughs> the other thing is I um, have found that since I've been home, I've had the time to deliberately lay out what I can do today and what I can hold off for tomorrow. And the, the challenge is sometimes when you do things that you love to do, you could literally allow it to immerse and, and just sort of go crazy. Um, I literally have to plan out a schedule. For me personally, I have to say, these are the five things that I need to do absolute. These are the things that are wonderful. And then I also leverage my partnerships. 
So I can't do everything myself. The beauty about partnerships is even if I could do everything, I don't want to do everything. How can I leverage someone to sort of be part of the recipe um, that I have to make sure that we are all benefiting from it? Because we're in this together. We're a community. And that involvement with other people gives everyone uh, an opportunity to be part of the solution. So that actually helps everyone. Yeah, I love it. Harris, go ahead. What has, uh, I guess part one is, has the culture always been a way that people can work at any time? And if not, what has allowed that to be okay now? Uh, what does the organization do? How do people respond? Like if somebody's not responding to an email at 10 or 11 a.m., how has that uh, been okay inside the organization at Freddie Mac? I'm curious how that has all worked. You know, it's interesting because we were <laughs> very judicious about these are the hours and this is what we do. And um, of course, with me having been on the trade floor, there's no laptops. There are no laptops. So even when everyone first went to quarantine, um, our capital markets, in order to continue to function, to keep the markets available, we still had to go into buildings. And so they were very resistant. We can't trade. We can't do this. So it, it had to be this situation and circumstance to force people to think outside of where you are. And I realized the more constrained you are, the more opportunity there is for innovation or something different because you have no other choice. And so now, um, in order to keep people engaged, in order to keep people working, to, to limit the health issues that, and the mental wellness, being, well-being issues that have persisted because of this, because it's been so discomforting for so many people and have been open about it, uh, we're trying to adjust and pivot to say, how are we meeting the needs of our people? Even to the extent that um, we were supposed to have people come back into the building, there are some essential employees, uh, we've put a rule in place where as long as you need to take before you feel comfortable coming back, even into 2021, we're not asking anyone to come back who's not comfortable. We're not asking anyone to do anything that's going to put their family at risk. If someone in your family contracted COVID, you're not going to have to use your leave. Great. So it's putting those things in place that say, how are we thinking about people first? And um, some of that value is translated into people still performing without even asking them to. Yeah, I love it. Thank you, Hermika. And, You're welcome. And, uh, and so I want to, um, I want to kind of riff off of what Hermika has started here, this energy you've brought to the, the, the question, what are we doing to, um, to address this space? What can be done? That was a um, an amazing list of things that Freddie Mac is doing that Hermika, I know a lot of that is because of what you're putting in place. So um, awesome. Let's open it to the fuller group for for a discussion. Let's um, is anyone willing to share some of what your organization is is doing? Um, or some of us that are maybe external consultants, what we have had um, clients tell us that they're doing. Anybody have anything? Um, I have lots of questions I can still ask Karmika, but I wanna make sure we also have a um, pull, pull in some, some others here before I continue down that path. Um, anybody have anything you would share? That you I know I can share a little bit it being in healthcare you know, we have, we've always been somewhat of a conservative organization where, you know, it was very new for us, for the folks that were on the back end to be able to transition to work from home. Um, that was a big deal for us because, you know, we come from a philosophy of we're all in this together. Bedside RNs, they have to go into work, you have to come in too. And so that was a big change for us. So we, we now have two separate workforces. We have the ones that we are now supporting that are remote. So we're, <clears throat> we're doing a lot of the toolkits and the burnout and how to help support them virtually because that's new for us. But then we also have the other component where we have the nurses, the physicians, the pharmacists, the respiratory therapists that have to show up to work every day, who have families and children. And so we're working on what the right mix is to support them. You know, we 
have resiliency toolkit. We do a lot of partnerships with our employee assistant program. We partner with a company called Equilibrium to help with you know, resiliency and dealing with that stress and burnout. We do a lot of promotion of how can we support childcare within <clears throat> the areas because we support a lot of, you know, a larger region. So we are constantly pushing out resources. Of, Here's this company that's offering, you know, daycare, childcare, virtual learning opportunities. So we're doing a lot of focus around that to help support our staff who have to come in. Um, we're doing a lot of trying to create flexible work schedules so that people can maybe accommodate those. Um, so that's been a little bit of a struggle for us is to really support our folks who are out on the floor um, coming in every day that are on the front lines. I mean, we're getting a lot of community involvement too. I'm sure you've seen in the news, we've got the fire departments, the police. I mean, a lot of people that are coming out and saying their thank yous and, you know, then that sort of dies down a little bit. You know, then you got to sort of pick that back up. So, um, you know, we're sort of working on the two fronts now. Wow. wow. Yes, Jennifer. Uh, thank you so much. That very separate spaces. So important. Oh, um, I hadn't thought about it that way, Jennifer. And yeah, mm -hmm. I get it now. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else have anything else that you are hearing uh, that's being done to touch the space that, that you would offer to the rest of us? that you personally are doing. Um, one of the things that I have heard in a lot of my coaching sessions, and, and Hermika touched it too, is um, I'm actually hearing from so many of my clients, and I believe this to be true for me as well, I'm working more now than I did before. Um, and and so I, there have been so many weeks where I'm working 10, 12 hour days at every day of the week. And, and so I'm hearing that a lot. And to even um, Ethan's question earlier, this work-life balance or, or, or well-being and performance, because I think that those two come together in this, how are we addressing that are you hearing the same the same kinds of things? Is this even true for you? Um, one of the things that I have have had surface is so many leaders um, are pushing out promoting work life balance, and and they're not modeling the work work life balance. They're sending emails at 10, 11 o'clock at night, and, um, and they're working all hours of the day. And that perception, or the optics, I would say, of that can make a lot of the employees feel like they, too, need to do the same thing. And, and, and so I'm interested, have you heard that to be a thing, where we're working more? And, and how are you doing that? Um, Margie, please. Yes, so I'll comment on that. What um, I have uh, in some of the leaders I've worked with is suggested that if they have to uh, do the emailing late at night to put it in draft, put it in the morning. So, because it sets the expectation, um, and, and I personally have been in a job where I was in burnout. So I have done work uh, with people with burnout sharing a picture of myself where I'm just unrecognizable to people who even know me in the audience. And that was the expectation. My boss would work on Sunday, Sunday night. And I, upon myself, felt that I had to respond. So coming from a lot of experience and having that is, it's okay if you need to work on Sunday night or Friday night, just draft them and send them Monday morning at an appropriate time. So take care of your, so set that example for them. I love that. Yeah. Yes. I, and even I, now you, you got me thinking, Margie, save it as a draft or I don't know how to do it, but I think I can figure it out. Have it set to go out at a, it, can't you like set Outlook to send it And I suggested that and he was like, I don't know how to do that. I would have to ask my secretary and I'm like, that defeats the purpose. Yeah. If you know how to just leave it in draft, we'll, we'll go I with that. Push it off. Okay. Yeah. So no, that's, that's, that's fantastic. I love that idea. And I will actually share that with clients. Um, I hadn't thought about it that way. 
Margie, uh, were you going to say something else? I felt like maybe. Yeah, and I lost it. <laughs> oh, sorry. I oh, I know the other thing I was going to say, just something that I've offered just personally to just through my own uh, coaching work is I've offered and, and I have five people already on board and probably another is 50 hours of uh, pro bono um, health and wellness coaching for people. Um, so these are people that have stayed in pajamas, not eaten, not taking care of themselves, um, things like got into some bad habits. And so they're working through trying to, to get out of the PJs, pick the healthier foods. And so that's really exciting to give back like that. I love that. I love it. Yes. Yeah. yes. Thank you so much, Mark. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh, this, this work, Hunter, please. Work-life balance. Good. <coughs> I will just pick up on what Margie was saying. I guess you see that green thing. Um, <laughs> that's me. Uh, um, and that is with regard to, I've been encouraging in the work that I've been doing in employee engagement for the system for the last several years, this issue comes up a lot about um, burnout and um, when are we working and how are we communicating. And I encourage um, teams to have dialogue about this. And actually, we are going to have a team meeting tomorrow in person in our OD team, and we're having the same discussion around communication channels, timing, expectations, boundaries, self-care, um, and come to an understanding. We only have a seven-person team, but come to an understanding um, around um, the commitments that we all have and the pressures and challenges, and, um, and so... That's something that I've encouraged teams to talk about a lot because it might be that the leader is sending out all their emails on Sunday, doesn't expect anybody to reply to them until Monday morning. But if, I, mean, I used to reply to my HRVP clients immediately on Sunday if they sent me something. Was, oh, I want to be responsive to the VP. Well, no, they're just checking off things on their to-do list. But I trained them to know that if they emailed me on Sunday, I would reply. So now I've untrained them. Um, that I won't reply. So having this dialogue and framing it in terms of self-care and compassion and self-compassion and boundaries, because it, yes, we've had to all pivot and it's been hard on us in, I mean, personally, physically and emotionally, all of those other things. And yet I still am setting clear boundaries and um, to, for my self-care. So thank you so much, Hermika and others, for sharing what you're doing. We're in the middle of a, um, our new CEO started on December 1st. Now, he'd been with the system for years and years and years, but bringing, we are still in the process of becoming a health system. So we are sort of still like 14 different organizations. And so um, there are many challenges to clarity around roles and responsibilities for whose bucket it is to be supporting all of these 28,000 people. And that's a real organizational challenge, but I have to say that they have demonstrated, we have demonstrated really strong leadership. And I will just say overall, the importance of strong leadership and communication um, from our um, health system leadership has been outstanding. And I feel very comforted by that. And it's an incredibly complex, um, type of organization. And uh, um, we're all, we're in the neutral zone. You know, so if you think about Bridges model, we're in this neutral zone because we're anticipating a surge um, this fall, which some of our hospitals are saying is already happening. So we're in this neutral zone of continued fear um, of the unknown and waiting for shoes to drop. And it's also a time of creativity and innovation and doing things differently. So it's an interesting, time and being present and I uh, just want to thank you all for sharing everything. Thank you Hunter I, um, and I want to boldly call out what you said there at the beginning the importance of creating a dialogue around these things that we're talking about and so let's just go ahead and have a conversation around self-care and burnout and expectations and and boundaries let's put that out there in the room and uh, and I think that that can go so far too few of us are doing that, I think. Um, and, and so thank you for, for that. We, um, 
So we have about 10 more minutes here. And so I would like to take on anything you all are curious about. Do you have a question you want to put out to the group that you've been holding on to? Maybe you have a client who is facing something you'd like our, our thoughts around. Is there, um, and, and, and so we didn't ask you to come with that, but I'm asking you now, do you have that? Um, is there anything that you're curious about? Anything else you would like to share with us? Um, Hunter, please. I feel like just got finished talking. And uh, so I would love not on this call, if there is anyone, I've just got ECI certified not too long ago. I've done some amazing individual work, I think, modest. Yes. Um, work yes. in the last couple of months uh, with and I'm tr this group wants to transition to talking about it as a group and Jan and I have talked about it a little bit and I'm less confident in my group like I have some ideas for some activities and things I want to do I haven't taken your webinar on amazing group things um, but if anybody would have 30 minutes in the next couple of weeks to share with me how they've um, used the EQI assessment in teams, the introductory team things. I have some ideas for my MBTI days that I want to kind of morph a little bit, but I would like someone who has a little more experience to give me some thoughts. So I would let uh, me know. I think that's a great idea, Hunter. And so you'll uh, you'll have I'll both coordinate here and well, you'll have the recording, but. Um, but though, that's a great idea to, to, to stay connected with one another, to, to continue the learning. I'm most hopeful that you'll, you'll do that. So around the, the EQI, that yes, yes, yes. And some of these other things that we're, we're talking about here, are there mm -hmm. ways for y'all to continue the conversations that we've started? Um, Harris, you'll be sharing the-, the Yeah, I'll make sure. Yeah, I'll make sure everyone, we got everyone's email on here. So. Okay, okay, great. Thanks, Hunter. Anybody else have anything else that you'd like to ask, you'd like to put out there? I want to um, I want to make sure that we're creating some time. Jennifer, please go right ahead. And it doesn't have to be on this call, but I would love to, you know, I love hearing a lot of the things that you guys are doing with your with your team. Um, Harika, it was, I like a lot of the taglines you guys have created. So Definitely want to talk a little bit about that with our team on sort of bucketing some of the, you know, meditation Mondays, things like that. But one of the things we're really focused on right now is um, helping our frontline staff with stress and burnout resiliency. So if anybody has suggestions, things that they have done that have worked with it within their organizations for those folks that are coming into work every day, um, would love to, to hear it. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I'd love yeah. Uh, anybody. Megan, I feel like Megan Broker, you have something to say because we haven't heard. I'd love to hear. From <laughs> I actually have a similar request or question. So we, as a global consulting firm, had a very traditional model. I've heard a lot of themes that connect to what we've experienced. And that is that, you know, we have to be on client site. We have to be there five days a week. Um, we have a several global offices that people are in person and now we've gone to this model where we're virtual in almost all of the cases there are some clients we've had to continue to go and be on site but i think we were really agile and responded quickly with some resilience and stress management awareness early on and got um started hosting these sessions about here's the change curve here's what you might experience Here's what we know, we assess for hire, so we know what the profile of our employees is. And so we were able to map it to that and say, here's what it will look like for you. We did sessions for families, which is just not, it, it hasn't been the culture we've had before. And people's families were coming and, you know, we had our head of OD who's telling everybody, this is what it might look like and feel like at home. And you see all these kids and spouses like, yeah, that's my, my person here. But then we got to this point of like everybody just kind of got in this routine. We started figuring out that if you put in the subject line, do not reply, not urgent, that it, we started creating this expectation to get around some of those email dynamics. But I'm at this point now where I'm recognizing that that's, that's no longer sustaining us. It's not applying. 
people are not bringing that change curve along with them. Our firm started calling it the COVID coaster because mm -hmm. they would look at that change curve and go, oh yeah, that's, that's the roller coaster I'm on. And um, so I'm curious what this burnout, like we talk about, we need a resilience 2.0 training or offering some type of just giving people something to name it, what to expect. And so Jennifer, to your point of a request of any ideas, anything you're using, Hermika, you, you gave some acknowledgement to it in terms of the, the books and the self-test and creating some questions. It's a great starting point for me, but I am just really curious of what does this next phase look like? Because it's going to be a lot longer than we had planned when we delivered these resilience stress management ideas up front. I agree. Uh, so let me, let me say this first, and then I'm going to throw it over to Harris. Um, Megan and Jennifer, yes, yes, yes. Uh, and it sounds like to me that we don't, ha we need another session to talk about these, these, I, I mean, we really just got started. I feel like we can, so I um I would love to invite you all back and with with Harris uh, with Harris's uh, agreement to continue what we've started. We don't need to change the topic because this topic is so important and is what we're all facing: burnout, resilience, well-being. How do we um how do we touch this space? Stress. Um, and so I think it's our goal to pull us all back together to continue this conversation and to even give y'all some time to think about those spaces so that you can come back and share those um, more uh, with, with the rest of us. Um, let me, Hermika, you had shared, and I'm going to protect what you had shared with Harris and I, but even you put in writing some of what Freddie Mac is doing um the and, and i have it over my screen here if you're wondering why i'm looking over here um are those some of those bullets are comfortable they're just topics um that i might be able to share with the group so that sure. they can bring some other questions around those sure yeah. those are topical um items that were specific to the well-being aspect and they come in different forms. So they're not just seminars or workshops. Sometimes some of them are experiential activities, panel discussions, leaders participating. And then also there's been a lot of uh, work in the culture and talking about um, racial conversations and social justice and those sorts of things. And I think uh, there's a lot of work happening in that space as well to how to create a different form of inclusion and diversity of thought. Love it. Hermika, if I could put you on the spot um, again, what is one or two things each of us in this room can do today or tomorrow if we are feeling, what do you, what do you do to protect yourself, to, to touch this space? Is there, I'll give you a minute or two to think about it, but then I'm interested in what can I do? I'm not going to lie. I was feeling pretty stressed today. Um, and, and just being with you all and you've energized me and, um, and I'm ready to face the, the day this morning though. Um, I, I did my five minute journal app. If you haven't checked it out, you should. I absolutely love it. And that got me started. But, um, is there anything, Hermika, you are a guest yes. speaker and I put you on the spot. <laughs> There's tons of things. I would say the two top things that I would say, even though you asked me for one, um, once you get into a routine, do something else different. If that means that you're going to take your walk at one o'clock and I mean, you know, uh, five o'clock in the morning, I actually tried this and it didn't work the first week. I tried to do this step class at 1 PM. Never works. My schedule always bleeds into something else, but also I would say connect with someone else. I think that when you have mutual support from someone else, even if it's something as small as I started a book club as if I had time, another one, bringing other people together and being able to share and talk about what everybody else is experiencing is therapeutic. And so how do you do what's best for you to make you feel good? It doesn't have to make sense to anyone else, but you. And what does that look like? And put it on your schedule, put it on that phone and have the alarm go off and say, gosh, I don't want to do this right now, but I'm committed to doing it and see what happens. Yeah. Love it. I love it. Thank you for Can that. I speak to that for just a quick second. I know sure. we're running out of time. 
Sure. sure. What Hermika just said, I think, is one of the things that I've been working with with clients the most, and it's really around um, the notion of connection. And because you know, like many of you were saying, there's been such a, a tendency to um, become isolated, even for those of us who live with other people, you know, who aren't single but have family members in our house. I think a lot of times during this time, we've let connections lapse that are important to us. And kind of circling back to where Jan started us off in her comments in the gratitude, with our gratitude around, you know, who have I been taking for granted in my life? Um, I think a lot of times I'm helping clients discern, you know, what are the connections that would most fill me right now, <clears throat> given what I'm facing, that maybe I've let kind of fall aside a little bit, I've back garnered them, but those that would really serve me as I'm encountering all of this, this stress and, and so forth, and yeah. really helping them cross over the threshold between noticing where I am now and what do I imagine for myself you know, Love a month Love from it. now, and helping them kind of build some scaffolding around what are some little tiny things I can do that will help me get from today to a place that's more fulfilling and less prone to burnout and, and so forth. And I think the connections, I mean, going back to the EQ, right? Yep. The yep. relationships Absolutely. are so key. And that, what is the very thing we often throw out the window when we get stressed or busy? That's yep. the one, right? I mean, Jen and yes. I have this conversation like 5 million times ourselves. Yes. Yes. Um, I love it. I love it, Christy Julie. Thank you. And um, I know that we've reached the 10 o'clock hour. If you can hang for a few more minutes so we can wrap this up and understand if you, if you can't, um, I want to turn it over to, um, to Harris, but before I do connection, shouting out what, what y'all just put out there, Christy and Hermika and Jan started us off with it for sure. It is so, um, it is so important to stay connected and I am so grateful to be connected with each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Harris, take it, take it away. Absolutely. Well, uh, couple, thank you everybody for coming. Incredibly grateful for you all for showing up, for sharing your ideas, for asking questions. Thank you for that. Thank you to Hermika for uh, leading the charge and giving us some amazing ideas about from Freddie Mac that she's doing, uh, I'll send an email to everybody so everybody's connected here and then Hermika will share some of the ideas that she shared with Jen and I earlier. Uh, thank you to Jen for leading us through today's conversation. Uh, amazing job as always. I learn every time I get to hear Jen facilitate, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, everyone on here is EQI certified. We, are, uh, we have several new EQI certifications coming up. If you have friends that are interested in getting certified, uh, pass them along to us. Uh, we love teaching people about emotional intelligence. And uh, I'll, send, I'll send an email to everybody. So thank you all so much for your time. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Yeah, let's do it again, friends. Take care yeah. until the next time. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Good luck, Harris. Yeah. Thank you.